in the intro. Just a goal from the nine. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Christian Ballard, Ballard Sports Media, coming at you pre-recorded for the first time ever uh, with TikTok Chess Hall, our good buddy, best friend in the whole wide world, the Unprofessional Sports Show. How you doing, Chess? I'm doing good, brother. How are you doing? I'm good. This is the first time, I think, where we didn't actually go live, but we figured we'd record it and premiere it for you guys, but we hope to bring it back as a live show very soon. Of course, man. We miss you, boys and girls. Uh, as always, we missed you. And I miss my buddy Ballard. He messaged me and said, hey, look, I'm professional sports show's got to come back. And I said, you damn right. So here we are. Let's do it. So we're just going to keep things pretty simple and basic for today. And uh, mm -hmm. first off, uh, let's talk about like what you've been up to, man, because you started up a wrestling channel and everything. And I know Rama Jamma Taylor's in on it. Tell the people what's going on. Well, uh, the TikTok Chess Hall channel is not around anymore. Uh, I love football, but I kind of, you know, got tired of it. It felt like a job, which we know with me, a job doesn't work out. <laughs> But uh, it, I kind of got tired of just doing the football content, so put the uh, TikTok Chess Hall channel away. And we started a channel called Wrestling Talk. That's W R A S T L I N and the T A L K Wrestling Talk. And if Ballard wants to, you can put his link. You can put the link of it in the description if he wants to. Um, yeah, we're at eight, we're at eight hundred subscribers. I'm looking. We're looking to get to a thousand, and uh, we're having fun. But this is not all about me. We're talking about Ballard Sports Media. He's on the road to 2K. Let's get this sum of a bitch to 2K. He deserves it. I remember. I remember when he was grind, grinding for 1K. We were doing shows and kicking butt. And Ballard, he's going to be a damn sportscaster. I'm telling you guys. Oh yeah, we're working our way up there. Have I told you about my work at a radio station? Um, I, I think you've mentioned it, but you haven't told me full story. Just give me the whole story about it. That's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, so I've just, it, it's kind of an internship coming up this fall where I'll be Friday nights in a booth and it'll be for about eight to 10 weeks and, you know, going to be helping with high school football. So I, I've kind of been in talks with them. I stopped by. They haven't paid me yet, but hopefully that's coming soon. And even if not, I mean, it's just great experience. So now you uh, said you were, you said you were going to be on the radio. Is there a way we could find this? So we can hear you? So uh, you can go to the website, and I'll be happy to put that in the comments or something. And uh, yes. it's WKUL 92.1. and call 92.1. Welcome to Ballard Sports Media. Okay. Yep. They called me. They, they tried to give me another nickname. They said uh, CB. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I did, too. It's yeah. cute. <laughs> but – Man, there's just so much going on. I know God's got a great plan, and I'm just going to keep grinding. And, of course. And working hard on here, working hard in school, and working at my jobs and stuff. So it, it's just – it's amazing, man, what's happening. But mm -hmm. I, I'm just glad we get to bring this show back because I've been, I've been messing around with – first off, man, we got too many Georgia fans in this community. I've been messing around with Mayhem Matthew and doing Touchdown yeah. Tuesday, which is going well. But – the Unprofessional Sports Show was the first ever show I got to be a part of, and I hope you yeah. can do this for a thousand years. If we yeah, can. this uh, the Unprofessional Sports Show is the OG of uh, shows. I mean, it was we yeah. had a good run for there for a little while, and then we went away for a little bit, and then we came back, and then we went away again, and we're back, baby, full force. Uh, I can guarantee you this, and I can make this promise to you, Ballard. And you know when I promise something, I usually keep the promise. Uh, every football season, there will be an unprofessional sports show. I promise you that. And I'll be here. I'll be here every week. It'll be here on Ballard's channel every week 
at whatever time he puts this out at, I'll make sure I try to share it out on Twitter or whatever I got to do. And we just appreciate all you guys and girls in the, in the comment section. I see you guys on there. I see you. Hey, hey, Jerry Wells. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Love y'all. Mean it. Yeah. All right. Continue yeah. about it. I'm sorry. Nah, man. Uh, really, the only thing we got for today's show to actually get into some topics, man, I want to talk about our teams and why not start with the back-to-back -back champs and the Georgia Bulldogs. First off, before we get into 2023, as Georgia, you know, has a quest for a three-peat, talk to me about what it meant for your team to go back-to-back. -back. Well, I mean, if you guys don't, I mean, you guys know, 1980, last time we won it, 2021 was very special. Um, it was almost like having a kid in a way. Um, and then 2022, it was special, but not as special as 2021. You can attest to that, Bauer. 2009 was probably really special to you more yeah. than any other year. Um, and I don't know, man. The national championship game beating a team 60 plus, kind of boring. I mean, I'm glad we won, but like, the second one didn't mean as much as the first one. I'm just I'm I'm glad we went back to back, but three peats pretty much nearly impossible if we're being honest here. But uh, hopefully we can do it. Hopefully we have a good season. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I credit Georgia. I know that unfortunately that first one had to come at the hands of Alabama, but I mean, you guys earned it. I I picked you guys that season to win it all. I said. I feel like there's something about Georgia. Now, what's funny is in 2021, we were talking about a guy named JT Daniels. We weren't talking about Stetson Bennett the fourth. Nope. Um, Stetson, man, I remember you and Uncle – well, I, I'll just say his name, Lou. All the Georgia mm -hmm. fans out there were so ticked off about Stetson Bennett in like 2019, 2020. Can't put him out there. He's no good, blah, blah, blah. Stetson Bennett wins you back-to-back -back championships, man. You can't put any hate on that man's name any longer. Mm -hmm. He um, he definitely shoved it down our throats. I was a big – I was a hater because I, you got to think, man, JT Daniels, it was really big for us. And, and bringing in somebody who's shorter than him and can't throw as far as him, you know, I couldn't help it, but Stetson proved me wrong, and I'm I'm sure glad he did. He's the greatest walk on of all time. Can't never take it away from him. Yeah, can't never take it away from him ever. Yeah. Well, man. Uh, that being said, I say we go ahead and get to topic of conversation today. I mean, obviously, Georgia's on a mission for a three P. I think Alabama. It's safe to say they probably don't. I, I don't want to say they don't have it. But they are on a mission to put Alabama back on top of college football. Because uh, would you agree that Alabama – I know Georgia's gone two in a row, but what are you going to say if Alabama does win it all this year? I mean, uh, uh, I'll be bummed. I'll be bummed. still the standard. So. I'll, I, I'll be bummed out, but at the same time I'll say, well, that's Nick Saban. He's the greatest college football coach of all does. time. I mean – I mean, I mean, if I'm being realistic here, the only problem Bama has is the quarterback situation. Y'all don't know who if y'all y'all don't know whose quarterback is going to be, you know. And once y'all, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I've ahead. heard a lot about Ty. I've heard a lot about Ty Simpson, but we still don't. Yeah, know. yeah. I, I mean, dude, we're in the same boat as you in a way. I mean, our quarterback he's he's won two national titles, yeah, but he's been a backup the whole time. But he's got a little bit more experience than your quarterback, Scott. And and I'm leaning on that, but. If realistically, they're in both in the same. I mean, you're, we're both in the same boat when it comes to quarterbacks, pretty much. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm. Well, all so right, you man. Go, you ready to? Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? You want to go over Georgia's schedule first, then we can go to Bama's if you want to. Yeah, let's just get in. Go ahead and get into the schedules. Let's start with Georgia, and we'll uh, share screen here. This is from FBSSchedules.com. Of course, Georgia, we don't even need to look at last year. They went 15-0. and They dominated everybody that they played and went back-to-back. -back. So now the quest for a three-peat, and we look at their schedule, what stands out? They, we have the easiest schedule in the SEC. 
We do. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, you can go ahead. You can go ahead and check off the first three games right there, or the first uh, two games as, as wins right there. South Carolina kind of scares me a little bit. We don't know about Spencer Radler. I mean, he did good last year at the beginning of the year. Uh, I'm just glad that that game's – I think that's game's at Georgia, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is. Um, but that's yeah. a little bit of worrisome game, but I think we get it done in that one, in my honest opinion. Um, what do you think, Ballard, about those first three games? Oh, you'll you'll be two and zero going into South Carolina, and I I think you'll beat South Carolina, but I would also say just be careful because they got you in twenty nineteen. Uh, yes. South Carolina is no pushover. They got Spencer Rattler. They have a lot of experience coming back at wide receiver. They have some guys on defense. They're going to be good, man. I'm excited for them. Alabama plays them in twenty four at home, so <laughs> I, yeah. I can't really start trash talking yet it's not time but south carolina very much improved team uh did they they won their ball game last year i know they won the mayo ball a couple years ago but shape either way shane beamer is doing really big things uh they played the game against notre dame i just i, I know it was a seven point game i just keep forgetting if they won or lost but it doesn't matter i mean they made another bowl game they came really, really close, and they're just – they're going places. I mean, I see South Carolina legitimately as a seven- to eight-win team. They just got to take those next steps to get to nine, possibly ten wins if they want to, and I'm sure that they do. But could they be – here's the thing. Can they surpass Tennessee? They beat them last year. Can they surpass mm-hmm. Tennessee this year and be that team behind Georgia? I, I've got I've got them finishing third in the East, just because. Yeah. I think Tennessee is on a mission. Um, it all depends on Spencer Rattler, and uh, hopefully they do good, just not against us. That's all I hope. But who knows? Yeah, absolutely. Then you get into, and I I, I hope this team wins, but I know it's not going to happen. UAB. <laughs> <laughs> UAB. If, you, uh, if, you, if UAB win. wins, shut down a program. Shut down a program if UAB wins. <laughs> if they win, Ballard, I'll send you my microphone that I have. I'll send you my laptop, my TV, everything you want. Um, yeah, that's not going to be a contest. I mean, let's just be realistic here. By this time, we'll be settled in with our new quarterback. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I think we beat them by three touchdowns, if I'm being honest here. But the next game... I want to be scared about this next game, but I do think Auburn's going to finish last in the West this year. But if you look back and pass, every time people's doubted Auburn all year, that year they actually did pretty decent. But uh, and set Jordan Hare, which whoop de doo, who cares? But um, I think I think they finished last in the West. If I'm being honest, I respect that. But here's here's my argument for Auburn. Like I, I'm gonna try to defend them and give them a case for this year. I'm not saying they're going to win the West. I think that it's up to Alabama or LSU. But the last time, put Brian Harson aside, because he had like one and a half, like a, a year and a half, but mm-hmm. put him aside. Go back to the last time they had a, a, a first-year head coach with Gus Malzahn in 2013, going back 10 years. They had the prayer of Jordan Hare against your team. They had the kick six against Alabama, my team. And, you know, they made a national title. So can the impossible happen for Auburn this year? I th- I mean, it, it could. I, I think I pegged them at like seven and five at mm-hmm. most. But be careful what Hugh Freeze could bring to the table in the SEC. He's got the experience from L- uh, from not LSU, Ole Miss. Yeah, I mean, yeah. give uh, I think give Hugh Freeze two or three years, and Auburn won't be back, but they'll be better than we thought they were. You know, right? But I do think you guys win this game here. Um, I I just would be careful. Um, can t- oh, you love this team. Kentucky, go for it. Uh, when, uh, the neck bridge. Oh, Kentucky. Uh, oh, Will Levis, not there anymore. Uh, we're gonna drag Kentucky. 
uh, them neck bearded mother truckers. Um, you gotta be careful though, because you mentioned yeah, know. Levis is gone. They brought in Devin Leary. Yeah, but Devin Leary isn't really proven in a way. He's uh, he's just there. <laughs> yeah. I I would definitely be more worried if uh, Will Levis is a quarterback, but I think Kentucky will put up a fight, but. Hopefully, we score a lot more points. Dude, the past two or three years, Georgia hasn't really scored that many points. We've won by like a touchdown or two touchdowns. I'm, I want a three-plus touchdown win for Kentucky. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I think we beat Kentucky soundly. Hopefully, we beat them by three touchdowns. Hopefully, I don't know. Yeah, and do we even have to talk about the next team? Uh, my thoughts Mandy. on the Kentucky <laughs> <laughs> My thoughts on the Kentucky game. Kentucky, I like Mark Stoops. I think he's a good head coach. I think he's done great at Kentucky. But they just have never been able to take steps forward. They haven't taken steps back either. They just kind of sit there at six or seven wins and hope to get to a ball game every year. So that's just how I view Kentucky. Moving on to Vanderbilt on the road. Could be one of the last years as they get rid of divisions in the SEC next season. This will be probably one of the last times for a while we see Georgia and Vanderbilt chess. I just think they're on the schedule to be on the schedule. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, we're gonna beat Vanderbilt. I don't. I dude. I don't even know who their head coach is. I don't know their or their uh, quarterback is, um, but. Good luck to Vanderbilt. I mean, hopefully they'll win five or six games this year. Uh, shout out to Vandy Dandy. See you, buddy. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, Vanderbilt has a shot in this game, if I'm being honest. And then they get the bye week. But, Chess, I'm not even going to say anything about this next game. You uh, you give Florida everything you got. Go for it. First of all, I wish the Florida Gator Stadium would just float away into obscurity. Uh, I can't stand them. They're the – the fiber of my being doesn't like this team and never will like this team. Uh, I do like the color blue, but with orange, it just makes it look stupid. Uh, Florida is going to be terrible. They're going to be one of the worst teams in the East this year, and I love it. I love it. I hope Vanderbilt beats them. I hope I hope the offseason beats them. I hope the damn bye week beats them. I can't stand this team, but at the same time, I do got to give them credit. This is their Super Bowl when they play Georgia at the world's out, world's largest outdoor cocktail party. They're going to bring their A game, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, we spanked their ass the past two years in a row, and uh, it'll be three years three years in a row. Shout out to Rattlehead, uh, but I hate you, Florida, and you're going to lose to Georgia. So there you go. I could have went harder, Ballard, but uh, you got a PG audience, and I do not want to be rude. <laughs> no, I got you, man. I got you. I love it, man. Um, I'll say this. I, I, I think Dan Bullen was a clown show. Billy yep. Napier, I don't want to say it's a clown show yet because I don't think he's done anything wrong or dumb. Mm -mm. He just has kind of shown so far in his first – What's he? is it two seasons so far or was last year his first? I think, I think uh, it's two, pretty sure. Yeah. He just hasn't shown anything. So he took he, he 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 took over a Dan Mullen clown offense right. slash school, so I'm not gonna hate on him for that. Florida needed a head coach bad, and they had to go search, you know, far and wide. But I'm not gonna fault him at that. I mean, maybe they'll be competitive. I don't think they will because you still got Dan Mullen class in there. Give it another two or three years, like I said, with Auburn, and I think that Florida would be maybe competitive again. Maybe. Maybe. I yeah. think I, I do think that Bill Napier's up in the recruiting a little bit. Thing about Dan Mullen was he didn't want to recruit. He was NFL oriented in his mind. And that's that's really all I have to say on Florida. I mean, they just have a coach now that probably does want to recruit. He's just yeah. gotta find a way to do it. He was up next. Oh, uh, go ahead. Dan Mullen was NFL oriented, but now he's coaching at a high school. I'm sorry. Right. Continue, Ballard. Go ahead. <laughs> Next up is your homecoming game on November 4th against Missouri. Yeah. Um, last year. Got you. Yes. Got you. Yeah. Last year, Missouri almost got us. 
this is kind of a revenge game. We want to go slap Missouri, and it's in Athens. Uh, more than likely, it'll be a, a day game, not a night game. Uh, but uh, I think we're going to smoke Missouri for sure uh, because we won't pay back for sure. Absolutely. Yep. Homecoming game. Uh, doesn't have a time yet. That would be a good game to have at night if you guys get a night game this year. Do you have any? Let me see. Uh, I'm pretty sure. We, I think our first game's a night game. Yeah. Okay. 6 p.m. Yeah. Alabama's too, but we'll get to Alabama later on. Yep. Uh, Missouri. This next one, uh, I love Lane Kiffin. I really do. I, th I think he's doing great at Ole Miss. He just has to figure out the defensive side and not let it get to him. <clears throat> but I think Georgia would be a, a bit too much for Ole Miss to win. But I think they could come out and it, it'll probably be the biggest test of the season for the defense. Would you agree? I, I would agree. And – uh, what is it? Is it Jackson Dart? Is that who's the quarterback for yes. Ole Miss? I'm pretty sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm just glad this game's at home. You know, uh, uh, Lane Kiffin. I don't think we've played Lane Kiffin in a while. It's been a while since we played Ole Miss. Uh, but Lane Kiffin, he's got balls of steel, and he'll go for it on fourth down like he did a couple years ago. Y'all, he went for a fourth down like 20 times. Uh, but I do think Georgia gets it done. I think. I don't think. It, I think it'll be close in the beginning. Uh, but Lane Kiffin's got something – or we got something that Lane Kiffin doesn't have, a defense. He's he's like the Oklahoma type of guy that wants to score, 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 score. But you do that and your defense gets tired because your defense is, you know, going to be on the field constantly. They don't got the depth that Georgia does. So I definitely give us the win versus Ole Miss for sure. I like that. I respect that. And I think that it could be one of the tougher games, but I also would give Georgia the win. Up next, I want to give a big shout out to our friend Squid Tard and mm -hmm. our friend Big Vol Daddy BVD, who has been through pretty much hell this year, man. I'm pulling for Tennessee this year because of him. That being said, uh, except for against Alabama, but I hope it's a good game. But mm -hmm. this this could be this could be tough, man. It gets tough in the season for Georgia, and Tennessee. Tennessee yeah, go ahead. I didn't interrupt you. Go ahead. My bad. My internet cut out. I, I was just, I was just gonna say that Tennessee hasn't won since 2016. It's at Neyland late in the year, and Tennessee might have some stuff figured out. This actually is the loss that I gave Georgia in the preview video I did. Mm -hmm. And you have every right to do that because it's at Neyland which scares me, but what I can count on is that their quarterback, he can throw 80 yards or 90, yeah. but he's not accurate whatsoever. And Tennessee's defense has struggled the past couple of years. Dude, I, 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 if you had asked me a couple months ago who was going to win this game, I, I would say Tennessee because I picked Tennessee to win the national championship this year. But now that I sat and thought about it, I don't think they're going to win it. I think this will be the closest game Georgia has in during their season. But I think Georgia edges out Tennessee barely, maybe by a field goal or even a touchdown. Uh, Georgia has been in hostile environments in the past. I mean, we went to uh, we went to um, Notre Dame, right? That stadium was rocking. We uh, we went we went we've been to Bama. I mean, y'all killed us, but we're not getting to that. But <laughs> This game is going to be the biggest game of the year, honestly. Uh, I mean, it's, it's. I mean, they've already announced that you know uh, it's going to be game of the week, and that uh, um, game day is going to be rolling up on that game. Uh, but yeah, give me Georgia. I'm not trying to boast, but I think Georgia gets it done in the end. But shout out to BBD and Squidward, love you both. If you guys don't believe in there, a God or anything like that, look at BBD. The guys almost died like three times. And God has brought him back. He's here for a reason. I do hope Tennessee does good this year. I hope they only have – I think they'll have two losses this year, uh, Georgia and Alabama. But good luck to BBD in Tennessee and Squidward. Yeah, and like I said, this is the one loss because it, it's so hard to – I know they went undefeated last year, 15-0, and 0, but it's hard to do it again. And it's hard to predict a 12-0 and 0 season. You just have to find a loss somewhere. 
and I think this is it. I think it's late in the year against Tennessee. I think Tennessee struggles early on in the season, but they get stuff figured out by November. So I'm going to give you a loss here. But you Mm -hmm. move on, and you're going to be angry, and you play Georgia Tech. Shout out to C-Dog, who, by the way, Chess, I don't know if you knew this. I I think I told you the other day because we were texting about it, but I met C-Dog last year when I went to a break. Yeah, Yeah, shout out to C-Dog. He's a good dude. Uh, I think he roots for the wrong team. Uh, (laughs) I've said it millions of times. I don't know why Bobby Dodd Stadium is still standing. It's probably the oldest stadium in the history of stadiums. You'll get, you need a tetanus shot after you get done leaving that stadium. Uh, they don't have bleachers, for, for Christ's sake. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a slaughter, Ballard. It shouldn't even be at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Uh, it'll be all Georgia fans. Um, Georgia wins this game by at least three or four touchdowns. Sorry, Sea Dog, love you, but y'all are going to yeah, be terrible Georgia, this year. Georgia Tech. They're in for a rude awakening that weekend on rivalry weekend. But yep. you give them credit, they have looked really good these past few seasons under how who's their head coach? Brent Key. Thanks. I guess. Jeff Collins mm-hmm. is gone. Brent Key, the past year or so, however long he's been there, I think it's two years, but mm-hmm. he's done good. He's he's on the verge of making a ball game for Georgia Tech and getting them back to national relevance I think well I don't know if I want to say national relevance maybe state of Georgia relevance <laughs> <laughs> state of but Georgia yeah, you, guys, <laughs> you guys be careful here I'll give you the loss to Tennessee but you bounce back pretty mad and I think you destroyed Tech yeah um, Tech ain't got nothing for us um, they haven't had anything for us for the past I mean last year they did pretty good at the beginning of the game but then we, they, we showed that you know, Georgia has the uh, has the cojones to uh, beat him, but I think we go. I think we go undefeated. Um, do you want me to just do? You, do you just want me to tell you what my prediction is for Georgia Ballard? Yeah, I got you eleven and one. I want to hear yours. Okay, I got us twelve and zero in the regular season. We go into the SEC title game. No offense to you, Ballard. Love you, mean it. You know this against LSU. Okay. And we lose. We go to the playoffs, and we lose in a national championship game to whoever we play in a national temp- championship game. I think we make it back, but I don't think we get the job done. Okay. I respect that. Um, and that being said, you did mention Alabama, and you do have LSU for the West. I'm going to be honest. I have that too, but let's take a look at Alabama's schedule. Now, going into – before the spring game, here's the thing. Yeah. I did have Alabama 11-1 and one right out the gate, and I said their loss would be Auburn. I looked at the schedule. I said Tennessee, LSU, and Auburn. Two of those are revenge games. And Nick Saban, give him credit, has done good getting revenge on teams. Yeah. But now after seeing the spring game and seeing the quarterbacks, not that they were terrible – but they just weren't up to what they should be. I have questions, and I see question marks, and I see it on the offensive line too still this year. So that being said, let's at least take a look at the schedule and talk about where could they fall, Chess. We open with Middle Tennessee. Yeah, that'll be a slaughter. I agree. (laughs) Then we have to host Texas. Now, we have to go in depth on this game. This was close last year. Quinn Ewers is going to be the starter. Pending he doesn't get hurt, we won't see Arch Manning possibly unless something happens in like week one. I just think a lot has to happen for Arch to to win over the job. Quinn Ewers, I mean, Sark came out at Big 12 Media Days and in in his spring presser and everything. I mean, it's Quinn. So, Ballard, let's be honest. Last year, y'all should have lost to Texas. Am I oh, wrong we should have. Right? We should have had, yes. dude. We should have yes. had four losses, I think. Yes. Okay. Quinn Ewers healthy. He got hurt. What the beginning of that game, right? Which is uh, ironic. Before before uh, halftime, I think. Or like yeah. What's crazy is he got hurt, right? And it's ironic because you remember Colt McCoy got hurt too. Yeah. And all the Texas fans said, "Well, Colt McCoy would have been hurt. We would have won." So the same thing. This is the year to Texas to pr- – because, Ballard, I'll be honest with you, I think Texas is a playoff caliber team this year. I do too. 
I do think you guys get a loss here. No offense to you, Ballard. You know, I love you. Right. But I think y'all get a loss here because I just think I think Quinn Ewers is a more experienced quarterback than y'all have. Yeah, I'll give you the environment and I'll give you the defense. But can Alabama hold Quinn Ewers, you know, to like at least two or three touchdowns? Can he do that? But give, yeah. I'm gonna mm-hmm. give a record prediction and losses at the end. I, but if you want to give losses as we go along, go for it, man. I could I could agree that we could lose this game. I'll tell you at yeah. the end if I think we are or not. But I do think it's possible because Texas has one of the most productive offenses coming back. Uh, mm-hmm. Really, they only lost Bijan to the Falcons, and that that was pretty much it, right? I mean, yeah, I, maybe a receiver here or there, but I think they have like as Xavier Worthy or whoever comes back. I think they still got – dude, they got your guy, uh, A.D. Mitchell. Talk, talk oh, about that him. Oh, my gosh. He... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dude. I'm. I don't have a favorite player on Georgia anymore because the last two, Jermaine Burton gone to Bama, and now Ad Mitchell gone to freaking Texas. I hope Ad does really good, and if they do end up winning a national title, I tout that as a win because Ad Mitchell's on their team. That is the one of the most nicest guys in the world. Yeah. I I, I, I I've heard rumors why he moved back to Texas because family stuff, and I get that. But uh, I wish him all the world, all the greatness in the world. But uh, you guys better watch out for him, Ballard. That's all I can tell you. Oh, I know. He's good. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's fast. He's got good hands. And, you know, the thing about Alabama, too, is I, I just don't know. Because, you know, what's crazy is there were a couple guys that looked pretty good at receiver in the spring game and throughout spring practice that the experts talk about. Our lead receiver, Trayshawn Holden, went to Oregon. Oregon, yep. man, left us for the West Coast. But you got guys like Malik Benson, who's a Juco, Isaiah Bond, Ja'Cory Brooks. Jermaine Burton is on our team. Yep. Uh, he, at least for coming back, is the lead guy. But I just yep. – I, I think he's a good route runner. I just don't know if he's an explosive playmaker which is what you need today in college football. But, I mean, Alabama's got the things. The things that it's going to come down to is the right quarterback and then the offensive line and then the receiver stepping up. If they could do that, they'll take care of business. Getting back yep. to the schedule, Texas mm-hmm. is going to be tough. Right now, I want so bad to give it to Alabama, but I don't know, man. This is this is almost a coin flip because you have Texas who's going to have Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers, if he had not got hurt, I would agree we probably would have lost the game. He was a player two away. And it had to come down to Will Riker saving us. Not Bryce, not Will. It was Will Riker. I say not Will, not Anderson. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I would give it to Texas in week two. So we win against Middle Tennessee. We lose to Texas. Week three, I think we could go ahead and pick. It's USF. I, I like the home and home with this. I think going to Tampa, them coming to Tuscaloosa next season, it's going to be great. But be realistic, Alabama's got more firepower on both sides. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it'll be fun, though. It'll be good. I got friends that have gone to that school. So, yeah. Uh, let's get into the real stuff here, though. How do you feel about Ole Miss going to Bryant Denny? It's going to be another get your popcorn ready, but it, you know, it didn't even pop in the microwave. Uh, Lane Kiffin can't get it done against, against, he's like the one assistant that hasn't got it done against uh, Saban yet that I know of. Um, Even Jen's the Texas coach. He played him last year, but I mean, Lane Kiffin's had plenty of chances. Lane Kiffin, he doesn't seem like a head coach, man. He seems like a a daggum drunk fan just playing a coach. Um, Well, I'll I'll give him props here that he he definitely is one heck of a offensive mind and offensive coordinator. 
But you could be right. I mean, this is a defining year, I think, with Jackson Dart and uh, yeah. you know all those guys at Ole Miss. I, I think it's a defining year to see how he is as a head coach. I really believe that. Um, he's a uh, man. I don't know. Like, I I love his energy and all that kind of stuff. But Lane Kiffin's just a, he's a weird one. He's a uh, I don't know how to describe. It. He he's like uh, Lincoln Riley. He's yeah. he's like ready to go to prom and all that kind of stuff, but he doesn't win prom king ever. He gets close, but he just you know doesn't get to it. He's uh, he's offensive oriented, and when you're in the SEC, you can't just be offensive oriented. You know, Georgia's found that out. Bama found that out years ago. You got to have a defense. If he could have a defense, dude, I could see him having a run for the national championship. But if he doesn't have a defense, there's no way. I don't think he gets it done. I don't think he has one, and I don't think he gets it done. So can we both agree Alabama gets the win here? Yes, and I think it's going to be a huge uh, – by a huge margin. So Yeah. Now, let me ask you this before we move on to Mississippi State. How are you feeling – with all the experts out there saying it could be one of the best, are you buying Alabama having a great defense? Um, uh, yeah, they. I haven't seen Bama have a bad defense. Well, last year, you know, y'all's defense kind of struggled, but your your y'all's defense was still up there. You know, I think I think nice. really the only bad thing about the defense was the Tennessee game. I mean, even if you go look at OSU, it came down to. Hey, just cover the guy before he gets in the end zone for two points. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to think, Ballard. Like, the crowd was involved in those games, too, that threw off Bama a little bit, which is crazy because I've never seen a crowd throw off Bama until Tennessee. You know what I mean? Yeah. If the guy, it's got, as a Bama fan, it's got to feel weird for the crowd to, you know, throw you off a little bit. But I don't know, man. I think y'all will be good this year. I do not think y'all make the playoffs. No offense to you. I got but it. I, I, I do think y'all are going to be – I think y'all be halfway decent in a way, yeah. Oh, man, look who's next. Mid-tippy tay. I haven't said it forever. Mid-tippy tay. Mid the cowbell ringers. Rest in peace to Mike Leach, man. I hope yes. they did just for him. I, that was a tough loss this past year uh, back in December. Yeah. But I, I, I don't think they have enough to get Alabama. Now, it is in Starkville, and going on the road in the SEC is really tough. It could be a game for a little bit. I mean, Mississippi State's giving them trouble, but I, I would say that Alabama is just a little bit more built. And I, here's the thing. This point in the season, we please tell me that we have the quarterback situation taken care of and we have a starter named. I saw a prediction the other day that said Alabama doesn't have a starter this year and still makes the playoffs. And they just keep rotating and rotating and rotating between the three guys. And I said, that's going to drive me nuts. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy, man. I think – I think I just don't know where it is, but somewhere on the schedule is going to be the game that says, okay, this is our guy. Put him out there for the rest of the year. You guys transfer out. So – I think it could be by this game. I really think it's the week two Texas game that defines the quarterbacks. But at Mississippi State, here's the thing. This could be a trap because look who they got after is Jimbo Fisher on the road in College Station. Clown. If you overlook Mississippi State for a split second, they could yeah. screw up your season. Yeah. They could for sure. Sorry, Ballard. My bad. I didn't mean to yawn. Um, yeah. Dude. Yeah, okay, let's move on to the, to the Aggies. But y'all are winning against Mississippi State. We're, we've, we've agreed to that. Yeah. Let's go on. Okay, Ballard, let me ask you opinion, your opinion on something. Because here's my opinion. Texas A&M is going to be one of the worst teams in the West. Because they lost. How many people did they lose to the portal? Was it 19, 20 maybe? Something around that, yeah. I don't Jimbo. Know. Jimbo's a clown forever talking crap to Saban because you never talk crap to Saban because Saban will use that as tackling fuel, as we call it around here, tackling fuel. Tackling fuel. I do think, I, I think 
man, I think Auburn finishes last in the West, and I think that Texas A&M finishes right above them. Would you agree with that, Ballard? It's a hot take, but you never know. It is a hot take because you have teams like Mississippi State out there, and you have Arkansas too. I love Sam Pittman, but man, they're gonna they might finish a little low too. Uh, Auburn dead last. Texas A and M. It's either going to be A and M or Auburn dead last. I I would agree. Okay, cool. Uh, who y'all got? Now? Oh, we got. The Arkansas Razorback. Man, I, I love, love Arkansas. Yes, I, I love Arkansas too. Yeah. Homecoming yeah, I, game in school. Yeah, different. I mean, KJ Jefferson has never, he, I mean, he's shown flashes of being really good, but, you know, I don't, I hate, to say, I mean, you know, I love Sam Pittman death. You do too. He's a former Georgia coach or one of the former Georgia coaches. Um, but, yeah, Arkansas is not going to be able to get it done against Alabama. I wish they would give you all a run for y'all's money. Uh, but, yeah, give me Alabama in this game for sure. Yeah, I'll take the tie, too. Uh, Alabama hasn't lost to Arkansas, believe it or not, since. Honestly, you know, Tennessee, for the first time since 06, beat them last year. Arkansas yeah. hasn't won against Alabama since 06. And Alabama won on October 1st last year, 49-26. I'll tell you this. They got a good offense. They got a really good offense with K.J. Jefferson and company. Uh, they're going to be explosive, and it might be one of the tougher challenges the defense will face. But yeah. I think Alabama still gets the victory. Thing is, I think by this point, man, I think that uh, what Dallas Turner said at Media days that joyless murder ball that he was talking about <laughs> is going to yeah. take place by this point in the season. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I, <coughs> old Dallas Turner. Uh, dang, we already went over. Oh, no, we haven't went over the Auburn game yet. Uh, so y'all got Tennessee Ballard. next, right, Ballard? Y'all, y'all got Tennessee next. We got Tennessee, man. I I know we love to pick on Tennessee. We love to. Yeah. I I don't pick I don't pick on them like everybody else does. I'm just realistic. Tennessee's not going to win this game. It's a revenge game, and we've seen in the past that you know Bama loves revenge games, and Saban really didn't like losing to Tennessee. I mean, how many years in a row did y'all beat them before they finally beat, was it 19, 20? I don't know. I can't remember the streak. 16. But, uh, but, yeah. 16. But, you know, Saban gets his revenge. I, I do think Bama wins big in this game. Yeah, I got a message for those those Vols up there. I'm talking to you, <laughs> BVD. I'm talking to you, uh, Squidtard and uh, TriStar and everybody out there. I love you. But if you think you're just going to roll up in Tuscaloosa – get on the football field, and kick another knuckleball field goal, sit your tail down. I'll leave it at yep. that. This Bama's coming, man. you to be fierce. Joyless murder ball, baby. Let's go. Man, so next we got LSU, which I think is going to be one of the best. Bye week, by the way. Yeah, which I'm, I'm sure you're glad that there's a bye week and you don't have to go right straight to LSU. Uh, LSU is going to be really good this year. We sh- we've seen flashes of them in the SEC title game. I mean, they I mean they look really good in the SEC title game. Even though they got beat pretty bad by us, they look really good. Um, I think that Bama gets its first loss in Tuscaloosa. When's the last time that y'all lost in Tuscaloosa? Can you even remember, Ballard? Actually, you have to go back to 2019 LSU. We remember with Joe Burrow. Yeah, that's true. So – I think y'all lose to LSU again just because they got a more proven offense right now, quarterback two, and I think they're going to be on. I think they're going to be on a roll. They want to go back to the SEC title game and beat Georgia. So I got LSU beating y'all on that game. No offense to you, but give me LSU in that game. Uh, I haven't given a loss yet, have I? Uh, no. I can't be biased, 
Man, I don't. <laughs> I think it's close again. Nick Saban's good at revenge games. But Jaden Daniels, bro, and then Harold Perkins on defense. That's a scary duo right there that you have to defend and you have to offend with your offense. I don't know. I, honestly, I, if I've got to go with my gut, I can't believe I'm doing this. Shout out to Tiger Cat. TK, we love you. We appreciate mm-hmm. you guys. I would give it to LSU here. I think they get us two years in a row, but I, I it wouldn't surprise me if if Alabama does find a way past this game. But I, I just my gut says that LSU is going to be on fire this year. I think everybody's gut says that Ballard because of the SEC title game, and they they didn't really they didn't lose anybody, right. hardly. And I mean, uh, their quarterback is really good. I mean, very good. Even their backup quarterback's good, but yeah, LSU's gonna be good this year. Yeah. Up next, Kentucky on the road. Meet us at Kroger Field. They said. Meet us at Kroger Field. Uh, yeah. Uh, give me Bama. I have no war of the words in that. Give me Bama in this one for sure. Yeah, I think Kentucky's gonna struggle. I like Devin Leary, but I, I just don't know what else they got outside of the quarterback and. It's a tough place to go and play. We don't have a game time yet. We don't know if it's at night. We don't know if it's noon or 2.30 on CBS. We don't We don't know when it's played other than November 11th. Uh, give me Bama. They'll, they'll lose that LSU game, but they'll bounce right back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we don't need to talk much about the next one. It's Chattanooga. Any yep. fun facts you got about Chattanooga, Tennessee? Uh, I'm pretty sure I took in a dump in Chattanooga before. That's about it. <laughs> That's a noon game on November 18th for the Alabama Crimson Tide at Bryant Denny Stadium. Final home game. Going to honor the seniors, I'm sure. Yeah. For this year. Then, Chess, it's rivalry weekend. It's the big one. It's Auburn and Alabama at Jordan Hare Stadium. It is the Iron Bowl. Now, I'm going to give you go back to my preview originally I said 11 and one with a loss to Auburn I still think Auburn's probably going to get us this year I know I just said LSU too I I just have a feeling Hugh Freeze is just going to pull some stupid play out of his rear end and then shove it down our throats I I don't see I'm a big believer in Hugh Freeze I mean, yeah, but I give him, yeah, give him another two years. I think, uh, yeah, I'm not going. I think I don't think Auburn's going to have anything for y'all. I, I'm going to give it to Bama. I think this will be a, a blowout. If I'm being honest here, so yeah. Ballard shocked. No, I, I, you cut out a little bit. I'm just waiting to hear what you said. Oh, my bad. Sorry, uh, I said that. Okay. I don't. I don't think you y'all have anything for. I don't think Auburn has anything for y'all. It's going to be a big win for Bama. Uh, give Hugh Freeze another two years, and he'll be good. But uh, yeah, Auburn's going to Auburn's going to lose by a couple of touchdowns for sure. Yeah, they said that in 2021. We went to four overtimes. <laughs> yeah, true. I'm just saying. I mean, crazy crap happens in this rivalry, and especially I think Jordan Hare is a cursed field, even though Alabama and – like Georgia can attest to it. They've had some trouble there, not recently. Yeah, I hate playing I hate playing there. Yeah, but I, I just think that Auburn gets one of the two teams this year. And we already said that they lose to Georgia. Uh-huh. I think they'll be. I think they want to give it everything, and I think Hugh Freeze is on a mission. He's recruiting great too. Did Did you see them get the five star last week? Yes, I heard about it. Yeah, yeah. That, good for them. Yeah. But yeah, that is it for our Georgia and Bama schedules. We have 
uh, think we can both agree. Well, I don't know. I got Georgia 11 and 1 going to Tennessee and losing. And mm-hmm. then I guess you could say I have, I guess I have Bama 10 and 2 again with losses to LSU and Auburn, two of their biggest rivals. Yeah. I, uh, I got us going 12 and 0, and I also got y'all going 10 and 2, losing to LSU and Texas. So, yeah. Um, what else would you like to talk about on the show today? Because uh, we, I mean, really what we put in the title was Georgia and Bama schedules. But is there anything else in college football that excites you this season? Because um, the teams out there, I'll tell you who I'm excited for. I'm excited for a team like Penn State. Yeah, I, I like when Penn State plays Auburn. The why-not game is always fun. Um, man, I, I, I just want to enjoy football. I, I want to enjoy it this year. This will be the last four-team playoff forever. Um, I just want football back, man. It, it, it sucks when it, when football goes. It takes forever to get here. But, man, when it gets here, it's like flies by. So, I just want to have fun this year and and watch my games and not have to worry about uploading videos on them and everything like that. And enjoy your videos and all all my buddies' videos. You know what I mean? That's all I want to do. I want to have fun. This year's about having fun. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with having fun sometimes, man. You just got to relax. And I know you, you look, man, even before you took your channel down, you were working your tail off during football season to to put out great content for us. And you did it. And you did great. And uh, Yeah. Just I can't. continue on, continue on with your wrestling thing, though, man. You guys got. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll never, I'll never give up on that. Uh, I didn't give up on football. It just when I when when, when I, th- during the off season, I can't talk football because I don't pay attention to recruiting. I guess you could say I'm not like a hardcore Georgia fan. I mean, I'm a huge fan. I mean, we've all known that, but literally and figuratively. Um, but I just can't do. And what's crazy about it is some people probably don't even know I don't have a channel anymore, TikTok channel anymore. So you're getting it live on your stream first time right here. So you're getting big news. Um, I mean, to me, it's big, but I just want to enjoy the games, man. I, I, I'm happy to be able to uh, to be able to do this show with you, and I wasn't going to abandon you. I wasn't going to abandon you whatsoever. You're my buddy, and I love you, and that's all I really have to say. And uh, go it all, baby. Love all you guys. Love you, Chess, and I appreciate you all for doing this show. Thanks so much for sticking around and uh, tuning in to this premiere, and we hope to definitely get it going live for you guys very soon and continue the Unprofessional Sports Show. We're going to play the intro. Final words, Chess. Go dogs, baby. <laughs> Love y'all. Roll Tide. Just love Bama. Florida has Georgia underpants. 